Hallelujah. He loves you today. And he called you with an everlasting. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be in the house on today. I heard the Lord. I was standing there and I just heard the Lord say, move, girl. Hallelujah. I felt it in my spirit. Because when you call on the Lord, he will show up. When you call on the you can't call on the Lord, he will show up. You got to run with expectation. When you call God, you got to come looking. You got to come with expectation. You got to open up your eyes. And if you don't walk on the water, you got to see Jesus. You can't get out there on the water and not pay for God to move. You got to come with expectation. When you call on Jesus, he will show up. And he will show out.
But God wants to move. And when God moves, we have to give him the spirit of the Lord. When he says, walk, bid me to come, and he said, move, you got to get out the boat. A lot of times we stuck in the boat with both mentality folk and that thing a little differently. They got a different mentality about how God works. But God thinks in the supernatural. You see, faith defies the natural. Faith will make you walk on things that don't seem right. And so you got to leave them both mentality folk up in the boat. And even though the winds are boisterous and they're talking against you, you got to say, be that still. Shut up. You got to walk on the water. I got some water walkers in the house. I see. Hallelujah. Sometimes you gotta keep it moving. Shut the dust from your feet. See ya. We wanna be ya. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to tell it over God. Hallelujah. You just gotta let it sleep on. Sleep on. Jesus had to keep it moving. He had a mission. He had a plan. He had things he needed to do. When you need people praying for you, and you at the Garden of Gethsemane, you need to sleep on. You just look like you're tired. You got sleep all up in your eye. I'm about to be killed. Are you kidding me? And you got to sleep right now. All right. Let me get to my home over the place. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you would grab your Bibles with me, I am going to be reading from Luke chapter 15, verse number 22 through 24. And I'm not going to be before you very long. Hallelujah. I can't promise you're going to shout, so I hope you got it in. But you will learn something. Hallelujah. When you're there, say amen. amen. But the father said to his servants, let's go up to the 21st verse, just so you'll know why he's speaking. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in the sight, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this is my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now, if you would just give me a little time just to lay a foundation Amen. of this story here. This is the parable. It, it tells a story of a father and his two sons. It's one of the best stories, I think, that the Lord has ever told in the Bible. It is a story about a coming home, a coming back. It's a story of repentance and reformation, of return and forgiveness, of acceptance and restoration. It's a story of finding what was lost. We think of the father welcoming his son home after a long journey. His joy at receiving back alive that which was dead. For finding of receiving back that which had been lost, we think of elation. Or maybe even celebration. But there is much more to explore or to even discover. This is not just a parable of a prodigal son. For this is the first line of the parable. It says that it's a story about a certain man. 
this man doesn't even have a name. And that in itself is significant. But it's a story of a certain man who had two sons. Not just one. Two sons. An elder son and a younger son. It's a story about three individuals, but oftentimes we focus on the son that gathered his goods and I'm going to do my own thing. As well, if you take the totality of this story into view, it's a parable that is tied to the loss of one of a hundred sheep and to the loss of one of ten coins. Right. Jesus tells many stories here. If yeah. you go back and you yeah. read the yeah. whole yeah. story, it's, yeah. it's tied to the murmur, murmuring of Pharisees. I'm pretty sure you guys don't do any murmuring and complaining in this tabernacle. Right. I'm pretty sure you guys are all good fellow Christians, yeah. nice to one another. Yeah. But but they, and let's just preach about the Bible folk. They, 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 they were murmuring right. about the Lord they just had some complaints about some things. Yes. They didn't like the way Jesus was doing some things. You know, that doesn't happen today. <laughs> Isn't it funny how the Bible is an uh, indication of things that go even now, yes. years and years and years yes. later. Yes. It tells the story of things that are going on, just murmuring and complaining. Yes. Why is he doing that? Yes. What is up with that? Yes. He always got it. Able to 
to let them touch me. All right. All right. What would have happened if the woman with issue of blood wasn't able to touch the hem of his garment? What would it look like if the woman at the well wasn't able to sit down and speak with you? What would happen? That woman was promoted to the, 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 this day. I promise you, the Bible says. Her name is written in the book of life because she sat at the well and had a conversation with a man that the Pharisees thought.